So I realised the other day, I haven't been counting or anything, but it suddenly struck me that I've been meditating for three years now. And in that time, I generally don't think I've missed a day. I think I've meditated every single day for three years. It's like 1,095 meditations. I wanted to make a video to f try and document what I might have learned in that time. And hopefully some insight for you to see where the ruts have been on the way, what you could potentially learn after three years of meditation and whether it's worth keeping it up. And when I say I've meditated for three years and I haven't missed a day, I swear, I'm not trying to break to you or anything like that. I'm not trying to say, look what I've done. Meditate for three years without missing a day. No way, I don't want that to in any way put you off or make you think that I'm trying to say, this is how good I'm meditating. But I just haven't wanted to miss a day. Been quite lucky, I suppose, in how rubbish I feel, not rubbish, but how different I feel when I haven't meditated. So I, I feel the need to meditate. And that difference that I feel when I have meditated and how much better I feel when I have meditated encourages me to do it. So I, I've generated my own motivation and create a strong habit as well. So what have I learned? Nothing. No, I'm joking. I've learned an abundance of things. But in truth, learning nothing is kind of the aim. Meditation has helped me reset and connect. It gives you the opportunity to discover new things in a way that is less clouded and overcrowded by judgments and preconceptions. So yes, I am now more filled with nothingness. It sounds negative, but when you're filled with nothingness, you can let in more joy. Joy is like a, a rare, shy animal, which will only come to you when you're truly not searching for it. And that's why when we're looking for happiness all the time, we don't have that true feeling of joy because obviously we always, we're, like, we're lacking something because we're looking in certain areas for happiness. But in staying completely still and accepting, this rare, shy animal will be curious of you and it will come out and it will want to see what you're doing. And it, eventually it might come up and like, nudge you on the head or something with its nose and that is pure joy but you can't look for it you need to let it come to you and eventually you realize through your meditation that that's what you're letting happen and in doing it over and over again 1095 times Every time, you, you might have worse meditations than you did the time before, but in every time you do learn something a little bit, a bit better, and you get a little bit more refined at letting go and being able to let nothingness happen. And when nothingness does begin to happen, like I said, this feeling of joy, this rare animal, will start to show itself a little bit more and more and more. I do think comfort is key, especially when you're starting out. And for me, even still now, it solidifies your meditation practice and it definitely quickens your states of being able to let go faster if you are comfortable. Now, up to this point, I've read loads of books about meditation and different kind of ones, like some giving you a walkthrough on how to do it, some that are more of a talking piece about their life, which also includes meditation. 
And I think it's good to have that balance, to gain just as much knowledge as possible about these people that have spent their life doing it. One of the best and definitely the clearest book is actually one that I've read most recently. And it's really helped me to settle or, or get to an, another level. It's called Mindfulness, Bliss and Beyond by Ajahn Brahm. Meditation is all about learning your way. And sometimes it is impossible to explain how you can do it because letting go, no one can let go for you. You're the only person that can fully let go in the meditation. But this book for me, Mindfulness, Bliss and Beyond by Ajahn Brahm, it really gives you a good step-by-step -step talking through of how you can put the actions in place to give you the best chance of reaching these brilliant states of meditation. So I advise like giving that a go. I do feel like I have so much more to learn. I don't necessarily think about what I have learned, but I get excited by what I have left to learn. And I think that sums up meditation in a way because it makes you feel appreciation for what you can learn in life. And it clears your mind to give you the capacity to see things every day in a fresh, organic way. I struggle to remember what things were like in my head before. But sometimes I'll practice living 10 to 15 hours without meditation. And I generally feel my old ways and feelings come crashing back to me. I didn't feel bad all the time, but I didn't have consistency. And sometimes things would just, just feel too much. The world just too different to how I wanted it to be. We're not made to live in buildings, to not move for hours on end, to sometimes only see concrete, metal and plastic. It makes us fall out of touch and feel out of sorts with ourselves. And meditation pulls us back to a natural understanding and an acceptance of all. It's an awakening, but an awakening to letting go. Three years of meditation, um, gonna still do it, that's all I can say. I reckon I'll be doing it for another three years. I'll speak to you soon.